Hey everybody, I'm Natalie and I'm here with Mullen perched precariously on this dry hillside of the eastern slope of the Cascades. When I say eastern slope, what I mean is the Cascades go straight through Washington, down the middle. Um, and on the east side of the ridge line of the Cascades, which isn't technically one ridge line, but on the east side it gets less rain. And so if you keep going past the Cascades, you'll get to kind of like shrub step land, which is really dry and there's kind of not even a lot of trees in some areas. But this eastern slope of the Cascades still gets a little bit of rain and it gets snowfall. So it has enough water to fuel kind of a different set of plants. So mullen is one of those plants. Mullen actually grows in a lot of places and a lot of um, habitats in Washington. It loves like freeway median strips, which is not a place you want to harvest it. This is a place that you want to harvest it. So this mullen is here because this particular forest area was burned probably in the last 10 years. And um, you can still find pieces of charcoal around. You can see kind of charring on trees. And so this mullen, we actually had to look pretty hard to find one that was this big. Um, most of the mullens in this area are kind of the size of this one right in front of me here. And that's just because we're so far past the fire of this area that they're, they start to be kind of small. So mullen, verbascum thapsus, by the way, is the scientific name, um, is a biennial, which means that in the first year, it kind of gets this little bunch of leaves. And then in the second year, it blooms and then it dies. So it's right now it's working on creating the seeds, right? It's flowered. That's kind of what these things coming off of there are. That was all the old petals that are not needed anymore. And now encapsulated in these pods along the side of the plant are seeds. And um, interestingly, mullen seeds actually have a history of use. Um, they're slightly narcotic, the seeds, and everybody must think, oh, I've got to have that. Um, I, there's not a lot of history of use on humans, but there's a lot of history for using mullen to stun fish in water. So they throw the seeds in the water and the fish kind of get stunned and float to the top. Then it makes it easier to fish. Kind of, you know, a little bit like <laughs> cheating nowadays. They would probably consider that cheating nowadays. But anyway, um, all the parts of mullen are actually used for different things, which I think is kind of cool. The main part of mullen that we're going to use is the leaf. And this one's a little bit dusty. So I like to try to find ones that aren't so dusty, but you can always just dust them off. I don't recommend washing them off. A lot of people ask me that question, um, like, oh, should I wash it when I get home? Mullen especially, I wouldn't introduce any water because they're already pretty hard to dry because there's so much hair on them. And this midrib can be kind of challenging to dry too. Usually people will um, slice that with a knife to expose the inner part to dry more easily. Um, and mullen is one of those plants that we want to dry before using. I'm actually not sure why that is. That's just kind of the accepted protocol for mullen. And you can make a tincture, you can make teas, but mullen's the leaf anyway. Its main claim to fame is that it's soothing for coughs and it kind of helps phlegm, mobilize phlegm gently. So it's not, there's other like more strong expectorants, um, but mullen works more through like softening phlegm rather than like going in there and punching it, you know? Um, and it can also be appropriate. I mean, it's like you feel the leaf, it's so hairy and it's actually really soft. Like if I were a little fairy, I'd probably want to curl up in there. Um, and to me, that really says volumes about the softness of this plant. It's actually also an emollient, um, which means that that word actually means to soften. And the flowers, mullen flowers are actually used as an emollient, usually infused in oil. Um, and you'll find the mullen flowers used in ear oils a lot with garlic. And I think it's because the garlic kills stuff, but the mullen flower actually is soothing. Um, so people use mullen flower and garlic ear oil for ear infections for kids and, and adults and pets even. Um, the leaves are actually better to harvest when it's in their first year, when there's no flower, when it's kind of lower down to the ground. But you can still harvest them in this stage. Um, so you just harvest a bunch like this and take them home. And even this like would make like three cups of tea just with one leaf. So you don't need to harvest too many. Some people even bring like the whole plant home so they can take the leaves off when they get there. Or they'll like even hang it upside down to dry, which I don't think is the best practice because I think there's more mold happening there. Um, and actually, finally, I wanted to tell you guys about the root of this too. It's been more popular in recent years. People have started using it as um, kind of a moistening agent for tendons and ligaments especially in the spine, like we're talking about like spinal disc 
rehab and um, people are using it topically and internally. So like in an oil for, you know, like knees, any kind of soft tissue issues like that. Um, and you can use that with like comfrey or other Solomon seal. Those are all kind of building tissue herbs. Um, all that can be used topically, in fact. So that's mullein root, by the way, that I was just talking about. So yeah, all the parts of mullein are medicinal. It's a post-burn plant. Again, that's why we're finding it here. And um, it grows on both sides of the Cascades, but it's going to be found mostly in open, dry areas. So this particular hillside is a good example. I think that's all I have to say. If you have any questions about mullein, let me know.